The topic of copyrights and action figures comes up all the time, especially these days. KOs, fakes, original, and companies creating action figures and toys that look like existing properties without the licensing rights. This is a frequent topic right now. This is something I've got an expertise in, not as a lawyer. I am not a lawyer and nothing that I will say here will be a legal advice, but this is something that I do research and teach all the time in my other line of work. This is Hervé from Comic Book Bin, filling you in since 2002. Like and subscribe and let's begin. Now I've been writing about copyrights and trademarks for years at Comic Book Bin. This is something that I have to deal with all the time, especially with the website itself, a huge website. We've had a few issues where we've had to deal with contents on the website where people said that we didn't respect copyrights and so on. Unfortunately, some people use intellectual property as a aggressive scheme. If you want to shut someone down, you don't want a news article to appear, you can try to invoke copyrights to try to force the person to remove the contents that you don't want to be seen by the public. Now, now, this is not what today's topic is about though, but it does happen. There are even laws against using such measures to try to shut people down. So it's been used a few times against comic book bin. It's called a slap and we know how to deal with slaps now, but I've also had to deal with trademarks and so on. And like I said, part of my work involves doing research on intellectual property and also teaching that to university students. So this is a topic that is dear to me. The position I take here are not the position of a typical fan. A fan who says, let the KO company do whatever they want. They're small mom and pop shops. They should be able to do something. It's for the fans. Unfortunately, I can't abide by that position because it's not sustainable. And if you were the company, no matter what the size, in whose content, whose creations, whose property was used by a small upstart somewhere down the street or in a different country over in Asia, you would be probably pissed and you try to do everything to stop them. So today I'm going to lecture a bit on intellectual property in regards to action figures so people can get at least a good grounding because there's a lot of information that is transferred, exchanged. A lot of it is wrong. A lot of it is people saying, well, we should be able. Well, you're not. You're just not. It doesn't work like that. There's a bigger world outside. And of course, there are consequences for people who take intellectual property and companies or vendors who do not protect their own intellectual property. Something that's important is that if you don't protect it, you will lose it. So it is in their interest to protect their intellectual property. This is something fans often don't want to admit or don't understand. If Hasbro, if Mattel, Bandai, and all the other guys don't protect their intellectual property, who will? If they don't protect it, they will lose it. It's not about trying to protect big companies, million dollar, billion dollar companies, and so on. This is their livelihood. If they don't protect their livelihood, who will? And that does not give the right to any small company down the, in Singapore or whatever, the right to just take whatever they want and not pay a price for it. But before we go into that discussion, let's establish some of the, the basics of what intellectual property is. The basic tenet of intellectual property is that it is a property right. It is a property right that gives its owner the exclusive right to use a resource and determine how it's used. It is an exclusive right to the services of a resource like rent, income, and revenue. It is an exclusive right to sell or exchange the same resource. And this right is exclusive to the owner of the intellectual property. That means that they can set their own price. They don't have to sell it for nothing. They don't have to settle for nothing. And they are not to be forced to allow licensing deals. They don't have to. If they don't want to license it to you, well, tough luck. They have the exclusive right to determine how their property is going to be used. This is what is at the core of intellectual property, just like property, just like your house, just like your car. Although with those, your rights are still limited. You can't do whatever you want with your house. If you want to build an extra garage or something, you might have to get a permission from the city. And you can't not do whatever you want with your car. If it's not in a driving shape, you can't take the role with it. So rights are always limited in that sense. In the case of intellectual property, this is a bit more easier for the property user to say that they do have an exclusive right to that property. Because intellectual property at the end of the day is not a material good. It's an informational good. So it's not something that's tangible that we can touch, that 
we can grab Superman, Captain America, Optimus Prime, and Cobra Commander are intangible goods. We can't touch Cobra Commander. We can touch an action figure of Cobra Commander, but that is the expression of Cobra Commander. The very idea of Cobra Commander is not something we can grab in our hand. We can represent it in a toy, in a movie, a cartoon, in a video game, but we can't touch Cobra Commander per se. Now, there are several types of intellectual property. The ones that are the most related to action figures would probably be, well, most of them, copyrights, trademarks. So copyright and trademarks are, are not the same thing. A lot of people like to confuse them. They're not the same at all, but we'll go into that later. Patents. A patent is an invention, the way you construct something with a novel construction way. You protect the recipe on how to create this good. Trade secrets. Trade secrets are important and they have value too. The problem with trade secrets is that the moment that it's revealed, it's no longer a trade secret, which is why companies like to protect these trade secrets, like the secret formula of Coke, Pepsi, or the KFC sauce. Those are trade secrets. They only have value when they're secret. The moment that they're revealed, they no longer have value. Industrial designs. Industrial design is something that is getting closer and closer to the action figure world. And this is where a lot of the issues can come in. We'll look at that a bit later. And then we have the public comments. The public comments are intellectual property, which can be used by others. If I write a children's book and I put it on the web and I tell people expressively that they can reuse the images, the text, they can reformat it, they can make new stories with it. As long as they attribute me like the original creation of the work, this is part of the public comments. Something else is that some types of intellectual property eventually end up in the public comments, which means that intellectual property, in most cases, except for trademarks, lapse and return to the public comments, which means eventually one day, this Harry Potter book that you like, it will go to the public comments, which which means everybody will be able to copy it, change it, write new stories about Harry Potter and his friends, and so on. But it's going to take quite a while before it laps into the public comments. But this we're going to have to wait for 70 years after J.K. Rowling dies at least in the United States, it's going to take quite a while. So for most of us, we'll never see that day. Now, intellectual property is governed by international rules. There are several of them, depending on the type of property, of course. Every country has its own intellectual property unit or office. In Canada, it's called the Canadian Intellectual Property Office, CIPO. In the United States, it's called the United States Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO. There is also the World Intellectual Property Organization, and within that, there are several conventions that many countries have signed. One of the most used and known is the Berne Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works. It's over a century old. The Berne Convention is updated frequently, and many countries, not all of them, but many countries in the world, are signatory to the Berne Convention. Most of the countries, obviously, in the West are. So Canada, the United States, the UK, Australia, they've signed it. We have the Patent Code Operation Treaty, the Madrid International Trademark System, the International System of Appellation and of Origin, the International Design System, and the International Microorganism Deposit System. Some of those, as you can guess, will never have to touch. It doesn't matter in terms of action figures. The first type of intellectual property that may matter to action figure collectors in the action figure world are patents. Let's say I create a new drop-down feature for the hips and legs of my action figures. I can put a patent on that. If I put a patent on that, it means that no other company can use this system to add an articulation in their action figures. What this would do is give me a competitive advantage over all of my competitors. And if any of them would like to use this new articulation that I had designed for my own action figure lines, they would have to pay a licensing fee in order to be able to use that. Of course, patents means that it's about an invention. And usually those inventions have to be novel, they have to be new, they have to be useful, and not obvious. So not something that anyone could have just done tomorrow, yesterday morning, or something like that easily. It has to be non-obvious. It is something that has to be publicly disclosed, depending on the country you're in. There's several steps in order to protect a patent. Now, there are things that cannot be patented in some countries, and there are things that can be patented in some countries. For example, in Canada, you cannot patent a higher life form. If you discover a new plant, maybe, you can't patent that in Canada. You also cannot patent software. And 
and you can't patent games also. In the United States, you can't patent a plant, but you cannot patent DNA. Based on that knowledge, do you think that Dr. Mindbender and Cobra could have patented how they created Serpentor? Now, the case for patents is interesting in that a lot of the advances in terms of articulation probably come from Japan. I am not informed enough to know how patents work in Japan, but a lot of the novel articulation that we see do come from Japan. Now, can Japanese companies patent novel invention this way related to action figures? Who knows? A thing I do know is that once a Japanese company has made a new articulation, you will often find North American companies using a similar system later in their action figures. So this is something that needs to be checked. This is something that is interesting. Again, I don't have the full knowledge on this situation. And of course, Japan is probably, now I need to check this to be sure 100%, Japan has to be part of the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the PCT convention also. It remains to be seen to what extent they protect or allow patents to be put on action figure construction and so on. Now, trade secrets, like I said, cannot be enforced in a sense that they can be stolen, but once a secret is out, it's out. So it's a very problematic situation. So it's up to toy companies to protect their trade secrets. Now, if an employee goes rogue and gives that information to a competitor or a friend or someone that they just know, then this could be a breach of a trade secret. And of course, there are measures that can be used against that employee to have divulged that information, which is why often when we see interviews with toy company representatives, there are a lot of things that they will not tell us because of trade secrets. In a sense, we do have to play ball with them because they are under a lot of scrutiny. And like I mentioned, once a trade secret is out, it's out. So companies have to use their utmost measures to protect their trade secrets. It is upon them to protect those secrets. No one else would do it for them. Something that might be interesting to many of you who are into spy and thriller type of stories is that it is considered industrial espionage to steal a trade secret. So even a company like Hasbro or Mattel or Jedetoy could have trade secrets that could be part of an industrial espionage that could be stolen and used for the benefit of a competitor elsewhere. Or someone could steal that information and sell it to a competitor. So yes, even at the level of action figures, they are are issues such as industrial espionage. This is a serious matter. I know it sounds funny because we're collecting toys and action figures and who does that? Come on, we're talking about toys here, but no. Now let's look at the two biggest part of intellectual property, the ones that actually keep people awake at night and debating on Facebook groups, copyrights and trademarks. They're not the same. People like to confuse them. Even Toy Guru confuses them all the time. They're not the same. Let's start with the copyright. A copyright is the right to an expression of ideas. It's not an idea. You have an idea in your mind for a character that you'd like to see as an action figure. That's not a copyright. You don't have a copyright on that. You only have a copyright once you've done the first mock-up of that action figure, of that character. Then you have something that is copyrightable. Have an idea for a new character. Have an idea for a new TV show, for a new comic, for a new action figure. Yeah, that's an idea. It has no value. It only has a value once you've expressed this idea. Remember, copyrights are about intangible goods. So you need to express them in order for them to be valuable. A copyright gives you the exclusive right to reproduce the expression of your idea. It also protects you from infringement and derivative works. Remember that one, derivative works. Copyrights do lapse and eventually fall into the public domain, like I mentioned earlier. A trademark is different. A trademark is a protection on a name, on a label, and you can label anything with it. You cannot put a trademark on a generic term. It has to be a unique term. So for example, you could not put a trademark on the term snowmobile, but you could put a trademark on the name Chester's snowmobile, because it is Chester's snowmobile, not a snowmobile. The word snowmobile alone is not something that you can trademark. It is a generic term. Whenever you use to Google something instead of to search for something, you are helping in the dilution of Google's trademark on its name, Google. This is called dilution. Companies are always fighting dilution. Don't think that Google likes when people say, I'm going to Google something because it helps to render their trademark, which is Google, generic. It becomes a generic term. It 
becomes a verb. So companies like Google will often say, let's search for something. Let's not Google this, let's search for it. Trademarks can be renewed forever, but you have to be using the trademark in order to keep it. So you have to be producing goods and services or what we call wares. They have to be active. If they're inactive, they can lapse and someone else can take this trademark from you and register it. This is what happened with Hasbro and G.I. Joe with certain terms like Action Force and the Steel Brigade where Valiverse took on those lapse trademarks that Hasbro did not renew and did not use for several years. Action Force and Steel Brigade. What Valiverse did was completely legal. The trademark for Action Force and Steel Brigade lapsed in the United States. As you can see, trademarks are per country. If you want to trademark the same name in the UK or in Canada, you have to apply separately for that trademark in that country. You can have a trademark on any product or service or what we call a wares. And when you trademark that name, it's trademarked to a specific service or product or wares. You cannot, well, you could if you buy several different wares, but technically you don't have a trademark on the use of that term for every type of product under the sun unless you apply separately to protect each of those applications for everything. For example, if Valiverse got a trademark for Action Force for those specific wares, action figures, games, movies, and comics, that is the only thing that Valiverse has the exclusive right to label Action Force. Valiverse can label comics with the title Action Force. It could label action figures with the term Action Force. It could label games, video games, or movies, and so on. But that doesn't mean that if my neighbor to create a new car or a new blender that's called Action Force, that this would infringe on Valiverse's name Action Force in the realm of comics, video games, action figures, and film. A famous example of this is Aquaman. Aquaman, you all know the character from DC Comics, is a superhero. We all know him. But did you know that there is a perfume, a cologne for men called Aquaman? DC Comic, Warner, and Discovery do not have a trademark on the cologne for men called Aquaman. Aquaman is related to comics, film, games, action figures, and so on. That type of product. There is no trademark owned by DC Comics on a men's cologne called Aquaman, which is why this company has the right to have this cologne, this perfume for men called Aquaman. It is not an infringement on DC Comics trademark of the name Aquaman for the famous character that we all know. It's not. Remember that. That matters a lot. Now let's go back to copyrights because this is usually the place where there's the most debate. I wanted to get the trademark part out of the way for people to know what is a trademark and what is not a trademark. I think this should be clear now. But the copyright is where the real battleground is. So there's no battleground about Valiverse registering the name Action Force and Steel Brigade. That's fair and square. That's business and they've done it completely legally. They did not steal the name from Hasbro. Hasbro let it lapse. Any trademark that is lapsed can be registered by someone else fair and square provided that you do have a product with that name, a wear, a product or a service or wear that is ready to be deployed or marketed. A situation which matters a lot is those old 1980s animation and toy licenses that are being reused by other companies today. Often it is right that it is difficult to find who the actual owner of these properties are, but it is also right that you cannot go as a company and decide you're going to create a toy and also force the company or the right owner to stop you. You don't have that exclusive right to just create a toy on someone else's property and say, well, I'll create it and they can stop me or we can try to negotiate. This would be considered very hostile to force someone to do that. You don't know what their plans were because you don't have access to all of their trade secrets. Remember, trade secrets matter here again. You don't know if they were planning on doing something with Mask years ago. They've been in works in discussion with other companies. They have a revival plan for Mask. So you can't just say to yourself, well, I'll just make a Mask toy. I'll change a few things here and there. That's a derivative work, by the way. And I'll just get by. And maybe they'll force them to negotiate 
negotiate with me and give me a license that I can actually afford. They have the exclusive right, the rights holder, to determine the price of a license. You cannot say that I'm going to be creating my own toys about this property which I do not own because I don't have enough money to pay a million dollar license for this product that I want to create. That's not how it's done. You can't force people into deals with you. That's predatory in a sense. And I'm not sure if Singapore is part of the Bern Treaty. It probably is. Otherwise, not many companies would be doing business with them. So just because you're overseas does not mean that you're protected from the wrath or the legal measures of a company. A lot of Transformers KO are based in China. Now that's difficult <laughs> to enforce if you're called Hasbro because in certain countries, copyrights and trademarks are kind of respected when it's convenient. When it's not convenient, they're not respected at all. Western companies have in terms of clout, it depends what they can move the plant to Vietnam if there's con continuous breach of their copyrights in one country and the authorities over there don't do anything. They don't care. Or they can move their plant and their business elsewhere. They can try to sue. It's going to be more difficult. But we do see that the chaos, the transformer chaos, are taking a beating right now. We see a bit less of them. For years, people wondered what Hasbro was doing, what Takara was doing. I don't think they were just letting it go idle. I think they were just buying their time. We can see consequences right now. We see that the chaos are less present. They don't advertise as much that they sell products. If you need to use tricks like, I'm going to give you the free head of this character that I do not own in the package as a bonus, instead of selling it to you in order to try to get around copyright laws, you're not acting in good faith. It's easy for a judge or the legal counsel of your opponent to prove that. Copyright is not about just making money. The right holder has the exclusive right to determine who can reproduce their good, whether it's for free or whether it's for money. So just because you're not selling that head, you're putting it as a bonus for free. It does not mean that you can get away with it because you do not have the right to reproduce something because you're not the right holder. The right holder could decide if they want to allow company ABC to reproduce their character for free, but it's their decision. It's not yours to make. So saying that there is a loophole because you're not selling Tom Cruise's head as part of the Maverick Ace of Aviation set, you're just giving it away, is not an excuse. It is still copyright infringement. You don't have to sell it in order to infringe. All you have to do is to reproduce it and then you're in copyright infringement grounds and territory. I'm not sure who advised that company that they could just not sell the product and just give it away as a bonus because it was just going to be a couple of thousand copies. It's still not something that you're allowed to do. If Paramount and Tom Cruise want to sue, they can, even though technically no money was exchanged. These are things that are problematic and fans think that, oh, this is so smart. This is so cool. We'll get around. We'll get Tom Cruise's head on those Maverick action figures. Well, guess what? It's still illegal. Saying this, I understand that some people might be pissed at me right now. They're like, ah, aren't you a collector too? Don't you care about the small people, the small guy, about the collector? Because you don't own Tom Cruise's likeness. Tom Cruise owns his own likeness. He can do with it what he wants. And Paramount owns Top Gun. They can decide what they want to do with it. Not anyone else. If you ask me, and I'm going to go into opinion mode, I wish I could get those figures. I look at them. They're groovy. They're nice. But the one reason I haven't gotten them, I've been contemplating them and I want to pull the trigger and just buy them also. But I cannot because of personal ethics. I can't break those rules because I know those rules inside out. Here I am teaching you guys discussing copyrights and trademarks and I would go next door and just break that same rule. I have some personal ethics that prevent me from doing that even though I would love to get those action figures. They're groovy. I like them. Don't get me wrong. I like those figures. How they've been expressed. I'd like to get a whole set of them but I will not. It's a very tough decision here but I can't buy them. I can't. This was a primer on intellectual property and action figures and I hope that you've gained something from this. I know that many people will not like what I'm saying here today. These are not the popular positions. Most fans just want the toy. They, I want it. 
it. We deserve it. No, you don't deserve it. It's not yours. It's Hasbro's. It's Paramount. It's Mattel's. It's Bandai's property. They have the exclusive right to decide how their property are going to be used, reproduced, exploited, and so on. No one else can decide that for them and no one else can force them to do it. You can't force Hasbro to give you a license for mask and you can't force Tom Cruise to give you a license for his own face. This is actually going in the personal realm here. Tom Cruise is a human being. He's a person. You may like him, you may not like him, but you can't say Tom Cruise. You must allow me to reproduce your face on my action figures because I want you to say yes to me. People have a right to their likenesses. He doesn't have to give it away like that. It's his face. Why would he do that? Because you think it's cool? Can we have some respect for people here? You may think that Tom Cruise is a rich guy, billionaire, millionaire, I don't care. He still has a right to his own face. You can't force him to give you his face so that you can sell toys with it. He doesn't want that. He doesn't like that. He doesn't want to see his face on toys. Can we respect that? Very controversial, I guess. It should not be controversial that someone wants to protect their face. But this is where we are in the action figure world right now. Where fans and some vendors think that they can just force people to release their rights. So remember, even though Ramen technically selling the Top Gun action figures with the Tom Cruise face, it doesn't matter. They can't reproduce it. It's not about whether they sell it or not. It's about reproduction. And every sale for the set where this bonus is included serves as a sale anyway. I mean, this is a weird loophole that they're creating. They're creating laws that don't exist. And this is infuriating because when you say that, a lot of people say, oh, you're against the fan. Oh, you're against the small companies trying to make some money. Well, it's not theirs. They can create their own IP, which I think is what they're doing right now. Creating their own IPs. To work for Valiverse, they create their own IPs. Now they can do whatever they want with their IPs. So this is what Ryan Toys and all those other Transformers KO should be doing. Create your own IPs. Don't use someone else's IP. But again, that doesn't make me everybody's favorite when I say things like that because half of you are probably pissed at me right now listening to this podcast and that's okay. Well, like and subscribe. Comment down below. This is LV from Comic Book Bin filling you in since 2002. See you next time.